morning, everyone. Uh, Turning your Bibles to Psalms chapter 56. Psalms chapter 56, and um, and as you're turning, uh, we're going to talk about fear and a range of emotions. Uh, Is it okay to have fear? And we know in 2 Timothy chapter 1, um, Scripture says that he has not given us the spirit of fear. So we're not supposed to live in fear, but okay. Is that better? Okay. Um, we're not supposed to live in fear, but fear is an emotion that um, God has given us. Uh, it protects us sometimes, but we're not supposed to live in it. Mm-hmm. And um, this morning is called a worship. It's kind of like a testimony slash what God wants from us. Uh, many, of you, many of you guys don't know, I kind of held it back, but uh, three months ago, I got diagnosed with cancer, uh, specifically sarcoma cancer. And I found, I found a lump while working out. Um, I'm on the floor working out and I felt this lump. I'm like, what is that? And I scooted over because I thought I was sitting on something and it was still there. Long story short, Got an MRI, got a CAT scan, and um, the oncologist said, if I'm a betting man, you have sarcoma cancer. It's a fleshy. So this shook me, just like instantly just shook me because anytime you hear the C word, you know, you think, you think the worst, you know, and it could be bad. So it shook me, and here I am. I'm working out. I mean, I'm working out tough. I went through two workouts, and I'm – Sweating and everything, and I find a lump. Mm. So, uh, fast forward a little bit. Uh, I'm going to the doctor's office, and even though I'm in there with people, I never felt so much alone. I mean, you feel people are around you, and you feel alone. And this might sound a little mushy, but like one of my afternoons of crying out to the Lord, you know, I said, Lord, I feel alone and kind of like fearful. And another thing, you think, those of us who think we know our Bible, you don't really know your Bible until you get in these situations. That's where Scripture comes alive. At least it came from me. Scripture comes alive. You think you know your Bible, but you really don't know until God puts you in that corner. So, like I said, this might sound a little mushy, but one of those afternoons I was alone, I feel it. I was crying out to the Lord, and we have a dog. It's Janae's dog, actually. And uh, <laughs> this dog follows Janae. It's like an ankle bracelet. She follows <laughs> Janae everywhere around the house, everywhere. When I'm at home by myself, you know, he finds somewhere else to chill. But this one afternoon, I was, like, really crying out to the Lord, and I felt something jump on the bed, and it was Onyx. And he came and sat right next to me. I'm thinking, okay, Lord, is that you telling me that you're not alone? I mean, you know, you don't want to make too much out of it. But he never, he never chills with me, never. But the dog that day came. So, so again, is it all right to have fear and range of emotions? And I think so, because um, Psalm 56, David. David, here in this chapter, he's captured by the Philistines. And he's pouring out his um, heart to the, to the Lord. So I'm going to summarize and his, highlight some verses. So Psalm 56, verse 1, it says, Be merciful, O God, for man, sh- for man will swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. His emotion is way up here. He's afraid. He's fear. The the Philistines have them in the grasp, and many of us, we have fears of the unknown. We have fears of of illnesses and sicknesses. We have um, fears of uh, finances. I mean, just fill in the blank. And sometimes there's nothing wrong with that. But look at verse uh, 3. David comes right back and says, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. And here's the important part here in verse 3, in verse 4, rather. In God, I will praise his word, and I will have my, put God, in God, I will put my trust. 
when you get in these difficult situations, yes. is the word in you. It's mm. God's word in you. I mean, we need a steady, steady, steady diet of God's word, reading it, digesting it, meditating it, um, applying it. And it's when these times come. These times. That's when God's word will speak to you. And David have it here. So look at verse 5. He's back to his fears again. His, his emotions are up and down, up and down. All day they twist my words. All day they, their thoughts are against me for evil. And it goes on to verse 7, expressing his fear. But here in verse 8 and 9, this is the, um, two verses that really, really spoke to me. And hopefully it will help you. It says, um, and this is, this is David saying to God, You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? So it made me think, like, you know what, Kenny? Yeah, you do have cancer. Or you had cancer because I had surgery. They took it out of me. But he says, like, I number your wanderings. This is your number right now of where I have you to be. And, you know, I told Janae, I told a couple other people, I don't think my intimacy would have grown had this not happened to me. You know, like, again, you think you know your Bible, but the Lord let you know you can go deeper with me. And he will put you in positions where you cannot help yourself and you can only look to him. Then he said, put my tears in your bottle. See, God is aware of all of our emotions. He's aware of all of our tears, all of our fears. He knows of those of us who are his children. So these are the um, verses that really spoke to me. In verse 9, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. There are times where God is waiting for us to cry out to him. Why? Because that's the point where you are dependent on him. You have no other, where to, no other place to go but to him. He said, when I cry out to you. So um, me, I'm kind of reserved. I'm laid back. But trust me, you know, when I was by myself, man, I mean, all kind of, because you start thinking like, Lord, is this it? And have I done enough? What did I not do? You know, when you say well and good, you know, faithful servant, I mean, what are you going to say to me if I were to pass? So it's these times where, where I think the Lord puts us in a box, so to speak, in the corner and lets you reevaluate your life, you know. And here's another thing. When he does heal you, he heals you for a purpose. It's either to serve him or to give testimony to help other people. It's just not for yourself, you know. So, for those of us who are going through illnesses or wherever, fill in the blank with that fear, uh, hopefully Psalm 56 will help you. Okay, thank you.